Hey everybody, welcome back to Divinely Design Studio. For those who don't know, my name's Nicole and today we are here to do some more English paper piecing for Slow Stitching Saturday. So let's get started. and welcome back to the channel thank you for taking some time out of your day and spending it with me while we do a little bit of English paper piecing all right so it's time for you to grab out whatever you've been working on well I have been doing this little uh, so Alicia Spaker's trip to the stars mini quilt uh, for those that are new here thank you very much for joining us today Make sure you give this video a thumbs up and if you're um, new here and you haven't yet subscribed, make sure you hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon beside it and then that way you're not going to miss out on any future posts and thank you to all of my returning viewers. I really do appreciate you being here each and every week. Alright, so we have been working on this for some time. I have been pretty slack with it. It's spun up on the wheel. As you know, each week I spin up the wheel to find out what we're going to work on on the next week. So for those that are new here, uh, so far I have done all the white hexagons. So we have all of those done. Um, these are two inch hexagons. So they're all finished, done and dusted. We also have um, our corner bits. So these top bits and the bottom bits of the corners. So we've got those done. Um, there's four of those in the large hexagons. Um, so there's the other two. Okay, these are the fabrics that I'm using. These are Curiouser and Curiouser by Tula Pink. Um, and if I don't have enough of that because they were some really big patterns in it, I'm going to use um, Little Beasts. Um, and then last time we looked at this, I actually worked out what I was going to do um, and I did the centerpiece. So instead of doing it all colourful and then a white one, we reversed it and I used the kitty, which we got somewhat centred and um, then we've I've finished that. So that centre bit there now is done. All right, so now I'm moving on to starting to make all the stars. So, so far I've got these two and I've got some little triangles that I've got to get sewn, uh, sorry, diamonds that I've got to get sewn into them. And I've got some scraps left over from cutting the hexagons that I'm going to use up. Um, and yeah, so that's basically all we're going to do. So we're going to do a little bit of a whip and chat. Um, I've got my little board here just to make it easier to trace around. Um, and easier for you guys to see what's going on. Um, so basically, I'm just these pieces of fabric are a little bit too big. You can see there that there's way too much fabric. But these was just left over from the um, white hexagons that I made. So what I'm just doing is I'm just going to trace around the template um, on these diamonds, and then that way I can trim them up, and then they're going to fit the little diamonds. Um, okay, so we'll do that. Um, I'm using the glue basting method for this one. Um, Normally, I would like to. Normally, my go to preference is to um, basically use thread basting, but glue works just as well, so I'm trying it a little bit different this time. I still prefer the basting method, um, but I don't go all the way through so I don't have to um, cut them off and um, like cut up the threads off. I just basically have to pull the papers out and then um, when I'm sewing it all together. Right there. So, what has been happening? Um, not a great deal, actually. I have just been busy doing work stuff, so nothing real exciting. I was supposed to go to Toowoomba this week, but didn't end up getting there. Um, just work got in the way, and other stuff came up. Um, I was supposed to have day surgery last Friday, and on the uh, what date was that? The um, it's a bit squished. Or um, let me just think, what date was that? That was the 10th, I was supposed to have day surgery, that got cancelled. So that's been rescheduled for the 31st now of March. Um, but anyway, nothing serious, it's just, um, yeah, exploratory stuff, check up, make sure everything's okay. Just that time of life where they do those sort of tests, that's all. Fun and games. You know, you turn 50. <laughs> I turned 50 in during COVID lockdowns and all the rest of it. So all the things that I was supposed to get done two years ago are now getting done. So in the last couple of months, I've got things from the bowel cancer people. I've got things from the breast cancer people for all our free scans and stuff that we have to do. 
I mean, you don't have to do them, but it's advisable that you do do them. And um, yeah, so it's like, it's great. All this mail comes in the thing to tell you that you're old and you need to get all this stuff done. <laughs> so yeah, fun and games. Um, so yeah, that's all the, the things are um, for that sort of stuff. But other than that, everything is um, a-okay. Um, my, my daughter came to visit on the weekend, just gone, which was absolutely fabulous. It was good to see her. Um, that she's settled into uni really well um, and yeah we just hung out together and I got Brendan a new um, computer which arrived yesterday which is good so he can start editing his videos now without his dinosaur he's probably gonna miss his dinosaur but anyway <laughs> um, <clears throat> I know I should really iron these but like I'm just cutting out at the moment I can always press it a bit later um, I'm just using a lead pencil and I'm going to cut on the outside of the line just because um, I found that the template is so close there's, sometimes it's a little bit tricky to get the fabric to roll around so I'll cut on the outside um, and that actually is a pretty good tip because I know that even with the hexagons I had the same issue but um, tracing around like tracing around is great and then cutting on the outside of the line not on the inside of the diamond um, really does help to give you just that little bit extra and if you're like me and you have chubby little fingers uh, it is a little bit tricky to <laughs> wrap things around if you're not very agile with your fingers but yeah Alright, let's get these cut out. I'll chuck that. Oh, I won't put that in there because then I'll lose it. I'll put it in the in my little basket. So if you're wondering where I'm putting all the stuff, I've got a basket that I made on the channel and I'll link the um, video up down below. It's great for all this. It fits all of this stuff in. Everything that you can see here out except for this cutting board because that sits with my rulers. Um, all fits in there and it's got the little pockets on the outside where you can set your templates. Like I've got my thimble in there and on this side I've got so, the glue stick. Um, I have some wonder clips on there i use the outside of the bag so you can see here i've got pins and stuff um, i also sit my scissors in there as well the little ones than that where are they these ones here so i can sit them in there as well and um, it's just the whole kit then i can just pick up and um yeah take it i put all the little bits and pieces that i need in there and um that way i've got it and it works out so well It's not a uh, very exciting stuff. I could use my rotary cutter too, but um, I tend not to because I've had some mishaps before with that overshooting and all that sort of stuff. Sorry, I've had the hiccups all morning this morning. So basically all I'm going to do is just cut it around. And then I'll get my little, I've got this little container that I've been chucking all my little bits and pieces in because I'm going to make something and I'm going to use that as stuffing. You know, waste not, want not, as they say. So I have booked my tickets for Townsville in August. So that's exciting. I'm looking forward to that. I'll do some filming and whatnot. probably go a bit closer to that line but it's a little bit tricky to cut so and my scissors really do need to be sharpened and I'll just pop these over here in here so I don't lose them all Got little M coming up for Easter, which is good. Super excited about that. Spoke to her mum the other day, and apparently she's keen to come up, so that's good. And um, I was like, is she spending Easter here, or is she going back home? Because that would depict how long she's here for. And apparently, she wants the Easter Bunny to come to King Roy. So she's going to be here for Easter, which is exciting. So I will get her a couple of books <clears throat> and an Easter egg because her and sugar ain't a great mix so and um, yeah so we just usually get a couple of little ones <clears throat> 
I've got a little basket there. Put a couple of little big uh, little ones in there, and then one one rabbit, which is not overly huge, but it's big enough for a little girl. Um, for her, it's all about the Easter eggs. For me, it's about time off. <laughs> but looking forward to it. I'm thinking that we might go for a bit of a bushwalk or something. We might go up to the Bunya Mountains, go for a bit of a bushwalk, because the weather will be a little bit cooler by then. So yeah, I'm just going to think about some things that we can do that um, you know, won't cost too much money. Go up there, take a picnic with us, have a picnic, do a little bit of bushwalking. She likes going up to the bunnies because you get to see the kangaroos and the parrots and you feed the birds and all that sort of stuff. So she likes that sort of stuff. And it doesn't break the bank either. You know, and you know, it, sometimes you can go to places, you know what kids are like, you go to places and you pay a fortune to get in and then all of a sudden they decide they're going to have a meltdown or they don't want to be there anymore or they start getting really upset and then you leave and you've wasted all this money. So we tend to avoid those sort of things, especially with Mare, because sometimes she gets a bit like that. She just doesn't want to be around people. It just gets a little bit overwhelming for her. Not that it happens very often, but, you know, Murphy's Law and all. It is bound to happen because we've gone and done it, so. And it'll be also a little bit uh, cooler, but still warm enough to go to the beach. We might, you know, go over to the beach or something with her and over the Sunshine Coast or something. Depends on the weather. Hopefully it won't be raining or anything. We can do that one day there. She always likes a nice long drive and heading over to the beach. And she doesn't get to really do that with her mum because, you know, mum's busy and school and all that sort of stuff so I used to love school holidays when I used to go and visit my um because I lived with my nan and pop too when I was little and um I used to love I used to only go um once a year because they lived um up at Ballina and we moved all over the place but we were always you know a, a lot of hours away from them and um, I used to go every August holidays, mainly because it was my birthday in August as well. So they got to see me every year for my birthday. Um, and I used to go up and, uh, you know, go fishing and go to the beach and, um, yeah, do all these things. And, that, and then as I got older, I'd, you know, go off by myself and go to the beach and stuff like that. Like, I think back now... And like I was 11, 12 and 13 were the last times I went to visit my grandparents because um, my grandmother got sick on my 14th birthday. I did see her for my 14th birthday, but um, well, I seen her before my 14th birthday because um, three days before my birthday, she got really, really sick and got flown. Um, her kidneys failed. And she got, we were traveling, she had an appointment to see a doctor and we had gone up there to pick her up. And it was one of the rare times that m my parents actually took us to the theme parks. We never did that. We didn't have the money, but um, mum had started working and because we were older and um, so we had a little bit extra income and she and dad wanted to spoil us and take us to the theme parks in Queensland. Um, and we were going to Dreamworld. And we went to Dream. We were up here, up in Queensland um, for, we stopped into Ballina to see, see my nan and she liked to make sure that the appointment was still happening and all that, that sort of stuff. Um, so this is 1984. And so, you know, pre-mobile phones, all that sort of stuff. She knew we were coming. My grandfather was away because he's a, he was a merchant seaman. So he was away um, for three months at a time on his ship and um yeah so anyway we were taking we were coming up and so we coincided the trip um with us going to queensland and then on the way back we would pick her up and take her to her appointment in sydney because she had a specialist appointment in sydney and so um it was going to save them on airfares and all that sort of stuff and and petrol and all that sort of thing because um Think, did my grandmother drive? I can't remember if my yeah she drove. Um, she just didn't drive very often. Um, yeah. So anyway, actually, I don't think she did drive because I remember catching the bus. But then she could have just done that 
everywhere we went, we always caught a bus. So she could have just done that because it was a day out and it was exciting and we got to go places and stuff like that. Anyway. Um, yeah, so we went to Queensland, we came back and she was really sick. Like she wasn't the best when we, like no one in my family talked about sickness or anything like that. So, um, yeah, like she wasn't the best when we seen her and I sort of picked up that there was something going on, but you know, what it was like back then, should be seen and not heard and don't ask questions, all that sort of stuff. So yeah, so basically, um, we went for, we were gone for three days and then we came back to pick her up. And when we got there, she was not in a good way. Like she was not well at all. She looked really pasty, um, and not well at all. And so, um, basically um we put her in the car we got as far as port macquarie and i think that's like two hours from two and a half hours from um or oh, maybe a little bit longer from ballina and we pulled up we were stopping for the night and basically she was going downhill fast so we went to the hospital um well the ambulance actually came and got her that's right and um they took her to port macquarie hospital and then um we were all in the car in the car park back in the days when you could leave your kids in the car apparently um <laughs> there was me my brother and sister so we stayed in the car because it was only a very small hospital at that time and um i mean we were older kids and the windows were down and it was in the afternoon it wasn't like blazing heat or anything anyway um my dad came out and said look they're flying flying her out to Royal North Shore Hospital and your mum's going with them and then we'll drive. So basically off they went in the plane, uh, in the, yeah, in the plane they went, a small plane. <laughs> My mum had never been on a plane before and the first plane she gets on is that and she was, ter she was terrified of flying. That's why we never flew anywhere. We drove everywhere and um, anyway she got in and off she went and um, yeah and so basically they flew down and then my dad, my uh, myself my dad and my brother and sister we drove the car down the rest of the way and all i remember of that trip i'm not a great passenger and i never have been a great passenger and all i remember of that tri trip was it was in the middle of the night i was in the front seat and i used to always complain and i still do if people speed in like feel like it if they're going too fast or they're being erratic i don't know past life <laughs> coming back i don't know <laughs> anyway who knows? I've always been like that. I've just always had an uneasy feeling in cars. Um, so anyway, I apparently, and it, apparently it was the first time that I'd ever sat in the car and said nothing. And I, my dad was overtaking trucks and he was weaving in and out, like trying to get to Sydney because they were concerned that she wasn't going to make it. And because um, her kidneys, had, she didn't tell us when we arrived there three days prior to that, that she hadn't, um, she'd had problems going to the toilet and all the rest of it. And she'd had severe pains. She just figured, oh, it's fine. I'll just, you know, I'll sort it out when I get to Sydney and all that sort of stuff. So she didn't say anything to anybody. And we didn't know this at the time. And so, yeah. Um, anyway, I didn't say a cracker all the way there. We got there in like record time. <laughs> what feels like record time i can remember it like it was dark we were driving and the overtaking and at that time all the trucks were on the road um you know like in this country back then like there was a lot of trucks on the road there still are a lot of trucks on the road but back then like everything was done by truck um yeah so basically um we got to rural north shore hospital and my dad is like the kids were asleep in the car as well like so my brother and sister i call them the kids because they i was so much older than them like um five years older than my um sister and i'm seven years older than my brother and anyway um so they were in the car asleep and he's like just my dad's like i'll be back and so basically um i was babysitting in the car in the middle of sydney 1984 <laughs> no adults around anywhere in the middle of the night um, so yeah, I stayed there until it started to get daylight and my dad come down. He just figured that we were safe there, you know, like hospital car park. We were near the, the entrance and anything. And like he said, if you, if anything goes wrong, just come through those doors. That's where I'm going. Come through those doors. 
you know, it's not as if he left me there with um, the kids and no instruction on how to find them or anything like that. And it was just what we did back then. It wasn't no big deal. I mean, I know that there's probably a lot of people going, oh my God, that's terrible. But it was just common practice back then. You know, um, we know now that you shouldn't do that. But anyway, um, and at this stage, like my parents were only in their mid 20s. And so, yeah, they, they had made some questionable choices. <laughs> anyway, they came out and they said that she had gone into surgery. Um, by that stage, my Uncle Bruce had turned up. My Uncle Stephen had turned up. Um, stuff had been sent through to uh, my grandfather. Um, ship to shore call had been, um, sorry, shore to ship call had been put through to um, my grandfather and he was I think two days out from docking so he would get a flight back from wherever he was um, I to be honest I cannot remember where he was He'd, he would have been in the Philippines somewhere around there somewhere um, anyway everybody sort of turned up and she was really really ill so they put what had happened was she had basically poisoned her system because her kidneys weren't working and so the toxins were not leaving her <clears throat> her body and because you do that through you know going to the toilet and so she was quite ill she hadn't gone to the toilet either which is something that she we didn't find out until months and months later anyway um they put in a um like uh like a catheter or something to drain the poisons from her um i can't remember exactly what it was called but anyway they did all that and then that burst and um the next day it burst and released all the toxins through her body and basically put her unconscious um her like it, it was touch and go there for ages um you know they were worried that everything was going to start failing and all this sort of stuff i don't know the full details i've only got the cliff note versions because that's what adults did back then they didn't tell children anything and most of this information i got from um, my uncle Bruce and also my grandmother herself so apparently that's um, put her into a coma essentially um, and basically from that she was in there for a long time they put a, like she was on life support and all that sort of stuff so they had like a um, all that sort of wires everywhere and it freaked me out the first time I say I hate hospitals at the best of times and then I seen that and I was just freaked out um, like I didn't lose it but on the inside oh my god I was like freaking out because in my mind that's my mum you know like even though I have a biological mum I still see my grandmother as my mum and um, you know like you spend that much time with them when you're little you sort of see them at that as um, point so yeah um, she came through it and she had no kidneys after she had a couple of two kidney transplants both failed um, and at this stage one um, uh, one kidney had completely failed and so she still had one kidney but it was failing too so that's why she went onto the transplant list and she ended up having a transplant and basically neither of them worked um, one did for a little while and then it started shutting down so um, basically and again I don't know the full details of it I just know that that's what happened so they put a shunt in her leg um, and a lot of it was experimental at the time apparently and um, they put a shunt in her leg so she could have dialysis and so then for the next 13 years she basically had dialysis three times a week my grandfather um, retired and with his retirement money he bought a dialysis machine and um, so she could have dialysis at home so he actually purchased himself a dialysis machine, learned how to use it, all that sort of stuff, and did everything for her at home and looked after her and all that for 13 years. And, um, yeah, it was it was pretty full on. Like, we'd go to visit. Like, I, went, I still went to visit, but for the, she went into hospital just be, three days before my um, 14th birthday. And then she didn't come out. I think it was maybe... It always happened around my birthday with her. It was about two weeks before my 17th birthday was when she finally came out of hospital. But she wasn't in hospital, hospital for that entire time. She was over in like a, it wasn't a nursing home. It might have been a nursing home. Maybe I think it was. I'm not 100% sure, but it was a place where she could go and have dialysis and, um, 
and we could still visit her and stuff like that because it was it was a little while before my grandfather could retire. He had to go back out to sea a couple of times, but he was only go he was used to go um, twice a year. Um, he knocked that down to once a year, and then he done he was still working like here in Australia for the company apparently, and um, yeah, and then he fully retired. I think about eighteen months after the initial um, hospitalization. But yeah, she ended up in a place I think it was in Chatswood or near Chatswood in Sydney um, she was there for a while um, and then my grandfather busted her out as he said um, just before my 17th birthday and they came um, I went up and seen them no they came down that's right and then just before my 18th I went up and seen them at Ballina and um, but then after that I moved out of, like I was already out of home for a couple of years at that stage and um, they came down to uh, Wollongong um, just before my 17th birthday and then not long after that my parents left Wollongong um, and I stayed um, that I wasn't living at home at that stage anyway but um, it was so funny because my mum's like freaking out that I had moved out of home and her parents were coming to visit so she it's like and I left home on bad terms like I did not like living with my parents and um, I'd been out of home when they come to visit for nearly 15 months at that stage so I had to rock up home and pretend like I was still living there so my mum would my mum get in trouble off my grandparents <laughs> and then I just wrecked it completely the following year by rocking up there and going yeah I've lived out of home since I was like 15 and a half <laughs> I was almost 16 I think when I left home um, yeah <laughs> just like seriously yeah drop mum in it <laughs> but yeah she like he, he gave her as like she couldn't go away they couldn't travel overseas and they were that was part of their retirement moving to Ballina and going to be traveling overseas luckily for my grandmother she had done a lot of travel to Asia and stuff with my grandfather anyway because um one of the companies he worked with the wives could actually go on um the ship once a year and um so she had gone on the ship a couple of times and then instead of staying for the three months she'd go over to wherever they were and then she'd just fly back um and whatnot but yeah it was um not much of a life for her after that but he still did the best that he could um for her and um you know by getting that machine it meant less time spending in hospitals like not having to go to a hospital three times a week to get dialysis done they tried everything um in that first initial couple of years to to you know give her some normality by doing transplants and stuff like that but it just wasn't an option for her um in the end so he just done the best that he could like they still managed to travel around Australia and stuff like that they just had to work their holidays a little bit better they didn't go as often because um, he retired and used all their retirement fund to pay out the house buy the day house machine get the equipment that they needed at home to make her life comfortable and then um, yeah and then they just save up their money and go for short holidays they didn't go for very long holidays or anything like that like they'd come down to Sydney and visit mum or they'd go and stay at Uncle um, Stephen's place um, yeah like they just did holidays cheap basically but the house sat vacant for a long time Michael Bruce and his family moved up there for a little while um, just so someone was in the house and then after she passed away 13 years later um, yeah she got to meet my son which was great um, before she I've got a photo of her we holding Kai when he was a baby she came down just after he and for a holiday and stayed with mum dad and I went up and, and seen them um that she was like she was wrapped absolutely wrapped um my grandfather on the other hand was not he's not a baby guy <laughs> um but uh -huh, yeah she was absolutely wrapped um it was her first great-grandchild and she at least got to see you know the birth of her great-grandchild and all the rest of it and then he Kai was I think it was 93 he was born and I think it was 97 when she passed away yeah so yeah it was 13 years yeah 97 it was and I was living in Queensland and um yeah so it was not great but um and again the funeral 
was the day before my birthday before my 27th birthday and it was the day of my dad's birthday because he was on the 26th of August so yeah but she had a nice send off all her friends and family turned up you know it was a relief for all of us too because she wasn't you know having to live a half life and all that sort of stuff and it meant that my grandfather because my grandfather was um five or six years younger than my grandmother so um it meant that he still had a chance to go and travel and all that sort of stuff and he did he met he ended up meeting someone um through his church and um yeah and they were together for quite some time it wasn't like straight away it was you know a few years later um but yeah he was still living at the house he ended up selling the house and um moving into a smaller house uh, i think he actually moved into a unit in Ballina, like stayed in the ballina area um and uh yeah he ended up meeting a lady i on the other hand did not cope with that but i also talked to my grandfather about it and he actually said to me he goes you know what I don't, that's fine um that i was a grown-up about it unlike my mother um but yeah i basically just said to him you know look i'm really struggling with this you're just gonna have to bear with me um but yeah anyway he ended up passing away in um when was that um, 2015 I think he passed away 2016 something like that 2015 um, I think no 14 I think it was yeah 2014 he passed away so he managed to um, you know get a few years there of doing his thing and enjoying his life and doing the fishing and all the stuff that he liked doing and he wasn't alone, which was good. He didn't spend these last few years alone. He actually met someone and um, and they were good together and he had a good life and all that sort of stuff. And yeah, so it was interesting. I don't even know how I got onto that topic, but that's the topic we talked about today. <sighs> Weird, I know. I know. The strangest things things that you end up reminiscing about all right well we've got all them done let's get some stitching done shall we all right okay so i'll just put these away tell you what my neighbors this morning ugh, they were painful basically skids at like six o'clock this morning luckily i was awake but still skids at six o'clock in the morning not good guys like come on oh. They were all magnetized. <laughs> I do miss them. Like, I, I miss them a lot. But, you know, they're at peace now. Like, my grandfather, he ended up with dementia pretty bad, apparently. Um, I didn't go to see him in that last 18 months because, one, he wouldn't have recognized me anyway. And, two... I I just couldn't do it. I just I I didn't want to see him that way because for me he was always a strong, dependable man and you know, I know people don't necessarily agree with my reasonings being my family, but I just I couldn't do it. Like Michael Bruce understands because no, he goes, I get that. That's you know, you knew him as someone that you, you could depend on and you know, and it's hard. Like you don't want to see he goes, it was hard enough for us you know the kids he goes you were just you're just a granddaughter at the end of the day and i'm like yeah but he goes you're always close to him and all the rest of it he goes i can totally get that my mum on the other hand did not get it but then my mum does not get me never has done so yeah but um you know i asked all the right questions and all the things and my uncle bruce kept me up to date and all that sort of stuff and um you know, and basically said, you know, like, if you can't do it, you can't do it. Uh, apparently, you know, he wasn't in a good way. 
um, and I just after watching Nan get so sick um, I just I couldn't do it I just I just didn't want to you know she was such a beautiful like to me she was such a beautiful woman and then she got sick and she was just she was just the shell of the woman that she used to be and that just I, I just didn't want to see him like that and <clears throat> the blessing in that was that um, he wouldn't have known who I was anyway because Uncle Bruce said to me he goes he didn't even know who I was like he wouldn't have known you um, he said so you seen him and that when he was healthy and that's all that matters that's all that matters um, so luckily he's understanding but yeah some people in my family were not Um, but that's, you know, that sounds like a them problem. And, um, yeah, but they now are happy together at peace and doing whatever you do in the afterlife. <laughs> I think it's a, a little bit harder too because, like, I sort of do know why that topic of conversations come up because the simple fact is that at the time of recording this it is actually my grandmother's birthday um, so yeah she would have been 98 today so, yeah. I guess that's the reason why it's come up today it's always nice to think of her on her birthday I like to do that it makes you know it it's nice to remember her and not just on her passing but, oh, I just unthreaded my needle I remember when she used to when I lived with them um, I did physical culture and um, we lived in Eastwood and there used to be a town hall just it wasn't a town hall I think it was just a little like rec center or something up the the road from us and I used to go there every week and do fizzy with her and we used to go to Ballina and visit her friends she had some friends that lived out the back of Ballina um, I think it's called Austinville it's where they're Nara and Pa um, they owned a farm there and that's where I learned to ride horses and um, we went up there a couple of times got um, pictures of me on horses and all that sort of stuff learning to to ride with the cook sisters the cook children and um yeah it was yeah and um lots and lots of not i learned to somewhat play the piano when i used to go there they had a piano old farmhouse veranda all the way around I'd go and help Nam um, milk the cows and collect the eggs and feed the animals and all that sort of stuff. And it was so quiet. And I just remember, like, I just loved it. It was just like, I, it was my, I felt like I was in my element there. I love the smell of a farm. I love the smell of a farm in the morning. Yeah, it was just, it was awesome. And I think they used to actually, like, they only had, they had a farm but I'm pretty sure they grew avocados. Like there was one part of the farm that I never went to. But I remember um, Pa used to always go, and, and these were good friends. They weren't actually relations of ours, but we called them Nara and Pa because that's what their grandkids called them. And we used to go and visit their, them quite a lot. And they were um, friends, I believe. I don't believe that they were relations. Um, they were really close friends of my grandparents. And... Um, yeah, he used to go in the morning and my grandfather would go off with him and they'd go, I remember sitting on the veranda and they'd go out on the tractor and they'd go up over the hill and there was a part of the farm that I was never allowed to go onto and I'm assuming that's where they used to go and they would be farming and I believe they grew avocado and citrus but I'm not 100% sure on that. Um, and then their children, which were the Cooks, because that's with their last name, they lived in a house not too far from the main farmhouse. 
and like they also had like um, cattle and stuff that they used to grow for meat and then they had a couple of dairy um, cows that they used to milk every day for their own milk and to feed to the pig and all that sort of stuff they only had um, they had two and then they got rid of one I believe they got rid of one and then they only had one for ages and ages just stitched some of my hair in there because that's what you do apparently <laughs> and I used to love going there and riding the horses and um like I started riding horses when I was about four three and a half four I've got a picture of me I was it was about four when um I was with one of the cook sisters and you know for the life of me I cannot remember their names because it was the only time that I had anything to do with them after I went back to live with my my um mum and dad I never went back to to um Naran Pars until I was like we were mum was up there and um I don't know where dad was we were up there for something and um basically we went and visited um, Nara and Pa and by that stage the cook girls would have been in their 20s and left home so I wouldn't have even seen them um, so yeah so there's that <laughs> um, but yeah but they were still on the farm uh, the girls weren't but the, the, pa the their parents were and then the last time I seen the and see I've always just known them I've always just called them the cook sisters and then the last time I seen them was at um, at my grandmother's funeral that was the last time I've seen them and at that stage they were oh, they would have been in their 50s I know that they were like shocked to see me because I hadn't seen them for many years um, yeah so it was just yeah it was really weird but I loved going there and since then, they've passed away. Uh, I think one of them's passed away. The parents have passed away. Nara and Para, very much long gone. Um, and last I heard anything about it, um, the farm was sold off after the father died. Like, Nara and Para were gone, but they still had the farm. But I think when the cook's father died, cook's sister's father died, they sold the farm. Or maybe it was when the mother died. I can't remember. When one of them passed away anyway. But I learnt to play the piano there. I learnt to make scones there. I learnt how to milk a cow. Um, how to look after animals and all that sort of stuff. And I've always had an affinity with being in the country I guess that's why I live in King Roy and I was able to just leave the city I don't really like the city I, even though I've lived a lot of my life in the city I've always been sort of at peace when I'm away from the hustle and bustle and and all that sort of stuff I really like just being where it's quiet where you don't hear a car constantly going past and you can walk down the street and you'll see people that you know and you know and you're driving along a dirt road and everybody waves to one another and as they go past I, I like that that for me is just my bliss I guess I also learnt to do some sewing and stuff at Nar's place as well because they used to do some hand sewing I think that was the first place that I because Nar used to do um, fancy work and stuff and I th and she used to make um, doilies like, but like do tatting I think that's what it's called I remember seeing bobbins and I remember seeing um, the tatting and, and stuff like that. So um, I'm assuming that's what it was. And yeah, so she used to do that. Um, she used to make like all sorts of stuff and, um, you know, and that was sort of the first place that I ever seen fancy work because my grandmother never done fancy work. She, she was a seamstress and so she used to make clothes and do alterations and stuff like that. And, um, yeah, so. But 
but some very, very fond memories. And learning to fish with my grandfather, that was awesome. Like I, I used to love doing that. And he used to teach me like other little things, how to garden and all that sort of stuff as well. He taught me a lot of that. Um, how to, you know, grow your own food and all that sort of stuff. He always took me out. He always had a lot of patience for me. And I guess as grandparents, you know, like when you're parents, you're a different creature. When you're grandparents, you, you, you know, you're slowing down, you're taking your time, you you understand the importance of spending time with the grandkids and all the rest of it. And, you know, I guess you're just a different creature when you're a grandparent. You know, when, when you're a parent, you're... Like, even though I still got disciplined and, and all the rest of it, if I did anything wrong, but it's more, you know, it's more my parents' problem than my grandparents' problem. Do you know what I mean? Like, now that Mia's gone back to her mum, her day-to-day -day guidance is not up to me. For when she comes here, it's all about fun. It's all about doing stuff and all the rest of it. And I guess I was lucky because I also had that with... Um, with my grandparents, I got the best of both worlds, really, um, because I got to, I was raised by them to begin with, but then I also got to have fun with them at the same time because I wasn't with them for all of my child raising time. So they got, yeah. And I often say I'm the person I am today because of their guidance and what they taught me and all that sort of stuff because I was with them for the foundation years and whatnot so yeah anyway while I'm sewing this on we're going to cut to the video to find out what I am working on next week because as you know we have all of my slow stitching stuff on a wheel and we spin it up and so we can rotate through the um, projects that I have here and um, yeah and so we leave it up to the wheel of chance basically all right so let's cut to that okay so let's spin the wheel and find out what we're going to be working on next week going to be working on the dilly dally pin cushion all right let's take a look at what that looks like okay so i'm working on the dilly dally pin cushion and this is what it looks like isn't it cute i think it's just adorable it's by excuse me Bird, birdhouse patchwork uh, designs and it is a little pin cushion it's just a round pin cushion it's got a little bee on it and the majority of it is by the looks of it is just backstitch and maybe a couple of french knots in there just in the thing and uh, maybe some satin stitch and that's about it so yeah so that's gonna be cute make that up i'm pretty happy with that i should be able to get that finished let's have a look at it it's from 2017 um that's the artwork for it that's pretty cool yeah so there's some satin stitch in there and some french knots um and i think it's also got i got this from the quilt show last year when i went down with the ladies um with my lovely friends okay um yeah so we just basically are okay so it's oh okay it's got little um puffs on the end around the outside okay cool so it's gonna take me a little bit longer than just stitching it out but it shows you how to make it and with the back stuff it and then the little stuffy puffs you'll need 26 of them um, so they're just using what looks like Gudeman, the end of a spool, and turning them into little suffix puffs. So that's going to be cute. That's going to not take long at all. But um, I'll trace it. I'll have it all traced out and we'll start it. But I might actually do some of the suffix puffs during the week and get them done. So when it comes time to finishing the embroidery, it'll be done. And I'm probably normally I don't do my embroidery in a hoop, but I might put that in a hoop because you'll be able to see what I'm doing a little bit easier. Um, so yeah, I think I'll go that route on that, but that's going to be super cute. It is going to be super cute. And, um, it has running stitch, back stitch, satin stitch. That's all it's got in it. Cause most majority of it. Oh, and some French knots, um, trim to finish around the blue line. So we've got a, yeah, we've got the pattern piece there and all the rest of it. So I'm going to do that on calico. So that's going to make it nice and cheap. I've got some scrap calico there and I think I've got some leftover Tilda fabric. 
that I might be able to, I'll have to have a look through my scraps, but I will work something out on that for the backing. But that's going to be super cute. You can always do with another pin cushion. I'm happy with that. All right. And once I'm finished that, I will we'll have that for a giveaway. Um, that once I'm finished. So that's what I'll be working on next week. All right. Let's get back to this star, shall we? So, yeah, I'm thinking when Mia comes to visit at Easter time, we might go up because I'm going to take some time off. Um, I probably, while she's here, I won't do any live streams or anything like that because it's just a little bit too hard. When she was here at Christmas, we did do live streams, but, um, yeah, I'll probably just film them still and put them up as premieres and then I can still be in the chat with you and chit chat and whatnot. Um, so I'll probably just end up doing that and, um, go from there. But she'll enjoy her time being up here. She wants to come here, so that's good. I'm still, like, I'm being so slack. I've recorded me reading uh, Magic Cat to her, but I haven't uploaded it, so I've got to get a hold of that before. I'm going to finish that off this weekend, I think. And then I'm starting it. Um, I'm going to tell her to bring her uh, Bobby V. Brown books. And because um, she's been reading them, we got them for her at Chris. Oh, look at that. I put that on the wrong way. <laughs> Oh dear me. All right, let's just uh, snip that off, shall we? <laughs> and um, try that again. <laughs> uh, so yeah, um, I'm going to tell her to bring up her Bobby B. Brown books and I'm going to endeavour to um, film some of them while she's here and she's watching TV or she's off in the truck with Poppy. Um, I will endeavour to read some of them to her as well. Uh, let's let's just try that again, shall we? And uh, I don't even know how I did that. All right, that is how it's going to be sewn. <laughs> that was funny. Come on, laughing with me. If you can't laugh at yourself, what can you do? So yeah, I think Bunny Mountains. Do a bit of reading. Go down to the park. We might even go up to the other park. Um, there's another park here that's got like a um, zip line on it. Flying fox, whatever they call them. I'll see that. Um, I think the pool will be closed by then. So we might take a trip over to the beach. I think that will be excellent. Um, see how we go. And yeah, some baking. Um, what else can we do? Some diamond painting. She likes doing diamond painting. Um, I might even start her on doing some hand stitching as well. Um, Neralee was a bit younger when she started and Savannah was about this age as well, six or seven when she done some. Neralee's always been ahead of the curve with that sort of stuff, but because um, she if her sisters were doing it, she was doing it. Um, so she had that motivation to um, do it with her sisters and her and Dharma Jane used to sit there um, and stitch and chit chat and yeah, exclude Savannah because that's just the way those roll. You know, you have two kids, they get along. You have three kids, yeah, there's problems. <laughs> Gotta have even numbers, people. My advice to those young ones out there have even number of children. Have two, stop. Have a third one, you need to have a fourth. Because <laughs> otherwise, someone is always being left out. <laughs> and um, yeah, so. We'll probably do a little bit of hand stitching and I've also got a little quilt there that I might load into the machine because I generally don't do any quilting during the holidays because I like to be just available. Um, I generally don't have people coming to drop quilts off either because I like to be available for the kids but um, I haven't had to really do that the last couple of holidays because my kids are older and they don't want to talk to me. They much rather play their Xbox or do whatever they do with their friends and stuff like that which I'm fine. I'm down with that. But um, I might actually load up a little quilt and um, Mia can have a little play on the long arm machine. She's Because she wasn't tall enough before. Um, but she's quite tall now, so I think she'll be fine. I can just, yeah, I can do what I did. I, with Nara Lee, what I've done was I've got two kitchen chairs and put a plank between it. <laughs> and she had a play on it. Um, yeah, so I might... Um, I might get a me old sewing machine out, get her on the sewing machine because she got a little sewing machine at Christmas time 
and she can start making her quilt. I'll just do a post rail block with them so I get a jelly roll and um, I cut the strips into four like cut it in half and then cut those strips in half again so you get four strips from each one and then um, they sew them together so yeah I might do that with her that sounds like a really good idea that's what I'm gonna do um, so we can do that and um, yeah so I know that she's coming this time it's not a drop of a hat it's a couple of weeks off so basically I will get everything I need to get done filmed and all that sort of stuff it doesn't matter if it's not edited but I will get it filmed and then I can just when she's chilling out watching TV I can come out here and edit and get all that stuff done so that is the plan um, and while she's here I've also got to get the smalls issue out as well but I've got a lot of that already somewhat sorted so it's just a point of um, just a pretty much at layout so once I have everything through from everybody I will just be at layout um, which will be good and of course we've got our launch for the um, Patreon on the 1st of April as well so I'm not picking her up until the 5th of April so that will be fine that'll go all okay so all right well we're clicking over to the one hour mark so I am going to continue doing these two stars and get them finished and hopefully get a few more so this will stay out for the week and when I'm exporting or anything like that I will um, I didn't I actually left my um, sashiko in the car and I forgot to grab it out before I started recording but I will do an update of that in the Facebook group and on the community page of where I got up to I made some good progress so basically what I'm doing is whatever's out for the slow stitching Saturday because I'm filming and recording all the time I basically work on it anytime I'm exporting or anything like that um, I will um, work on it so I have it sitting down normally I have it sitting down near the um, computer but I was in the car the other day so I took it with me and um, I left my bag in the car I forgot to grab it out before I started filming so I will show that to you in the Facebook group and on the community page you will see that all right I've only got one more diamond to do on this but you get the general idea of what we're doing we have to make a lot of these um, so I'm hoping that I will get quite a few done and um, I will do as I said I will um, have this with me <laughs> I won't take this in the car because there's too many little bits and pieces to it. Um, I'll have this with me next week and I'll give you an update on how much I've got done. We'll see how much I can get done when I'm exporting and uploading videos because I've got to take it off my camera or off my phone and transfer it to, transfer it to the um, computer and then <laughs> I have to edit it and then I've got to export it from the editing software to the um, computer and that takes a little bit of time and then I've got to upload it and because um, then I can start editing something else but sometimes I don't have I don't have that so I might sit there for five or ten minutes while it's uploading just to make sure that everything's gone through okay and um, and uh, yeah all right so anyway that is what our little star is gonna look like we've just got one more piece to add in there and then it's official we will move on to the next one and then I'm gonna keep doing that until it's all done but that is it from me today have a wonderful day everybody very random story today but as I said it is at the time of filming this it was my grandmother's birthday and what a better way to remember her than her life's journey and everything that she did for me and and whatnot so have a wonderful day everybody and I hope that you're getting some crafting in and I will see you